So historically, in Angular, I've only ever used template-driven forms as opposed to reactive forms which use a slightly different paradigm. Now recently I was listening to an episode of Real Talk JavaScript with Ward Bell and John Papa, and they were talking about dynamic forms where the inputs being rendered are actually decided at runtime. Now I've never really done a whole lot of dynamic forms. Uh, it's, it's usually more advanced than anything I have to do on a day-to-day -day basis, but I wanted to take a look at dynamic forms in the, concept, in the context of template-driven forms to showcase that template-driven forms are super powerful and super dynamic and can be used to render uh, various inputs at runtime. So to explore this, I have a collection of pets and I can add any number of pets, which is the dynamic part of this demo. As you can see here, I could put in Lucy, who just turned seven on February 27th. Um, if I tab over, I can add Monty. Monty was our cat as a child and he has unfortunately passed on. And then you can see if I tab past this, the name is required so I can track individual status of each pet here, and I can come back and I can say, well, Indy, and Indy was eight when he was passed on. And if I submit this, you will see that in the submission process, we get all of the form data, right? So here are the individual pets, Lucy, age seven, Monty, age 21, and Indy, age eight. But in addition to the form data, you'll see that I'm passing through a reference to the ng model, uh, sorry, to the ng form, and you can see here that the form also contains everything relating to the errors and the various controls uh, that we have inside of our form. In fact, we can even see we can access things like whether or not the form is uh, pristine or invalid. We can get a collection of errors if there are errors to be had. So <clears throat> how do we do all this in a way that we have a dynamic number of inputs? So let's take a quick look at the app component. So the app component does nothing, very, very little here, except create a form object with a pets collection. You can see the pets collection here has the ID type name, age, and is passed on. These are coming out of the form itself. Um, other than that, you can see there's almost no logic here. When we process the form, I'm passing in the ng form instance, and then we're just logging out the data. And then when I add a new pet, you can see I'm just pushing values onto that collection with some default entries here. The only really important part of this entire component is that I'm adding a locally unique ID to the view model. And this is going to become important because each of the forms that we output in the template driven interface is going to have to have a unique name because we're not defining it as standalone because we want it to interact with the ng form parent such that it can drive the, uh, the validity of the form itself. Now the magic's really going to happen inside of our template. So let's take a look at the template. Here's our app component template and you can see that I'm using the ng4 directive to loop over our collection of pets and inside each pet instance, each iteration here, we have um, a type, a name, an age and an is passed on. Now what you'll notice is that each of these controls has a name attribute and that attribute is being dynamically set using attribute interpolation. And that's because each form control has to have a unique name so that when it's registered to the form parent, it can be registered uniquely. For example, if we jump over back into our browser here and we look at the, sorry, and we look at the form and we look at the controls, what you'll see is that <clears throat> each of these inputs gets registered in a single collection, which is why each of these names has to be unique. And these values here are the date dot now that we're uh, applying to the ID. So um, the rest of this is pretty much standard. Other than this attribute interpolation of the name, everything else is pretty standard. The ng model directive is being used to bind to the pet iteration index, right, for the type, name, age, etc. Uh, the only thing that's worth mentioning here is that you can see inside of the name control for the pet name, we're getting a reference, a template reference to the ng model instance of this input. So this is going to allow us to access the state of that name control, that ng model instance, which we're then using to drive the CSS class of the pet record inside the ng4, which is how we're managing to do this uh, red outline. What we can see 
is if I look at this, wait, is that if we look at the pet class here and I remove the name, you'll see that it gets this pet dash dash invalid. And that pet dash dash invalid is being driven here because that name control has been touched and is no longer valid. And the validity here is based on the fact that we have the required HTML5 attribute that the ng model is taking into account during its validation. Now all of these inputs are being implicitly registered with the ng form instance, which again we're getting a reference to here as a template variable pets form. And then we're using that pets form instance to drive the disabled attribute of the process form button which is why when the name here is missing, you see that this is actually a disabled button, right? We can't submit this. However, if we start to type here, what you can see is that that button becomes activated because the form itself is no longer invalid. So all in all, this is, I tried to keep this simple enough so that it was easy to understand, but dynamic enough to demonstrate the fact that template-driven forms could be dynamic and render a variable number of inputs at runtime based on user interactions. So you could imagine this becoming you know, more in-depth and complex depending on, on what we need to uh, accomplish from a business standpoint. For example, like a survey right, where the questions are based on previous answers. Uh, you could see that being completely possible with template-driven forms, I think based on on what we're seeing here. And again, this is actually more complicated than anything I do on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, for the most part, I just have you know static inputs in so much as I know the inputs ahead of time. I'm using the ng model to two-way data bind the user's inputs to my view model within my form controller. And uh, it just works, um, which is why I've never actually had to drop template-driven forms and learn reactive forms, because I have yet to find a scenario in my own experience that uh, is limited by the fact that I like template-driven forms.